All right. Hi, John. How's it going? I Thanks am, uh, if you are watching on uh, on the Chosen page or pages, uh, welcome. You know me. I know you. But uh, if you're watching on the Jesus Revolution pages, uh, this you know you already know John. I'm Dallas. Uh, I'm the creator of the Chosen, and uh, Jesus Rev and the Chosen. It's kind of like Jesus Month uh, in in February because yeah. the Chosen uh, episode seven and eight mm -hmm. uh, came out in theaters at the beginning of the month. Yeah, had a wonderful kind of opening weekend, and it was just kind of a little specialty thing. And then your movie Jesus Revolution coming out in a few weeks, and it yeah. has a certain actor who is the the ultimate uh, connection between the two projects you and i don't even really like each other all that much. not at all but, just to sit this close to each other was yeah you know, but jonathan dangerous. is kind of the glue between these two projects yeah. so we'll talk about why i'm talking about jesus revolution and why you've seen the chosen you like the chosen uh, right? by the way the the you know beth and i went to the theater and and saw episode seven and eight and uh and episode eight i had been seeing iterations of it on your on your phone on akis the cinematographer's phone First of all, how did you guys keep it a secret that you guys were doing the walking on water? Yeah. But it was spectacular. It was spectacular on the big screen. It was emotional, and uh, and and Beth said she's like, "This is my favorite episode ever of the Chosen." I agree with her, you know. And yeah. it, it was a spectacular finale to uh, uh, to the season. Well, that is very kind of you. And I have actually seen Jesus Revolution. I watched it with my wife Amanda, and we are also big fans of it. A lot of really really powerful moments. And uh, so, first of all, before I ask Jonathan, because Jonathan is here, uh, about his thoughts on Jesus Revolution, why he did it, what the connection is between this and The Chosen, what is Jesus Revolution for those who have not seen the movie yet? Because most haven't, obviously, because it comes out. comes out here this, like, in a week. It, yeah. uh, it, uh, Jesus Revolution is a movie. Yes. It's a movie coming to theaters uh, on the on the 22nd of, 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 of the month. And... Uh, We've made other films like I Can Only Imagine and American Underdog, uh, but while while we were making all those films, I've been trying to get this movie made for um, like seven years, uh, yeah. uh, a long, long time. It's the story of the last great revival in America. It's the origin of that in Southern California, and it's fun and heartfelt and funny because this spiritual awakening happened in uh, with the hippies uh, in, in in Southern California when a, a kind of a square pastor named Chuck Smith threw his doors open. Yep. Uh, who Kelsey Grammer portrays in the film, and he beautifully, has, Kelsey's incredible. Great. Yeah. yeah, you should use him. By the way, I don't know. I don't know what cat parts are open. <laughs> He's a little white for uh, <laughs> and a little non-Jewish for our show, but Some Roman somewhere. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, he's he's incredible. Uh, he's great. And uh, and I remember Greg Laurie saying, uh, Pastor Greg Laurie uh, saying that when Chuck Smith met Lonnie Frisbee, who Jonathan portrays, it was like nitro meeting glycerin. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, I had I had become a huge fan of the show. And uh, and gotten to know Jonathan, got to know you, and uh, and thought, hey, can, you know, what's everybody doing in the off season? So Jonathan uh, is it stars in the film brilliantly. Uh, Akis, who cinematographer for the Chosen, also shoots the movie. So um, I borrowed some stuff. Oh, I remember. <laughs> I remember getting ready to start filming season three and wondering, hey, can my actor start reading scripts yet, or is he too busy with your movie? And can my cinematographer come here for prep, or is he too busy doing your movie? I was just keeping him warm, you know? So, the, you know, yeah. It was a tough road for me to become a fan of the movie, but it was good. <laughs> Show that, uh, the, 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 remember the Time Magazine? Yeah, so my, so my, my parents, by the way, the reason my name is Dallas is because my dad, my parents were at kind of the culmination of the mm -hmm. Jesus Revolution, which landed at Explo 72 in Dallas, Texas, where 100,000 at least, it was- It was a quarter million, 100,000 that night, and then a quarter million the next day. Were there kind of just, uh, and, and my dad had such a, a, I mean, he'd already been a believer, but he had a radical kind of spiritual revival in his heart, and I was named Dallas because of that. But that, my parents were there too. Yeah, at Expo seventy two. So were my wife's parents. So that's it, insane. Yeah, it's crazy. But th this this Time Magazine article. So this this Time Magazine. I bought, I I got this on eBay in twenty fifteen. I was doing a movie called Woodlawn and researching that time period before we did. I can only imagine. And I got this on eBay. This was four years after there was a Time Magazine that just had the words "Is God Dead" on it, and mm -hmm. uh, to just no picture. First time Time Magazine didn't have a photograph, and there was this like ten page spread that you can't read online. That was the most positive, like, for Time Magazine to write that way about Christianity. It was, like, buoyant, and it was optimistic, and it was this positive account of this revival that was sweeping America. And I 
grew up in the church. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. I grew up in the church and was saved when I was five years old. But I had never sp- experienced anything like that. Neither yeah. has anyone in our generation um, at all, and so or anyone younger than us. And and so I just began to think, can this happen again in our time? And I spent years and years researching it. And every film that we made, it was like, I just want to get to make Jesus Revolution. So the fact that Lionsgate, the movie studio, let us make this movie yeah. uh, called Jesus Revolution with the level of authenticity uh, we put into the film is a miracle. I still don't know how it happened. It's just a total miracle. And uh, and it, I love the movie, and I love Jonathan's performance in it, Kelsey, and the rest of the cast. It's fun and funny, uh, but it's also really meaningful, and there's a movement behind it, which is maybe this can happen again today. Yeah. So, Jonathan, hi there. Hello, gentlemen. Hi. How are you? So, um, you are, I mean, the chosen takes a lot out of you as an actor, not just when you're filming, but the prep for it. You have a lot to memorize. Uh, I don't know if you remember this, Jonathan, but there were a lot of big scenes in season three. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, yeah. I'm going to trust you, you on that one. I'm going to take yeah, yeah. you for it. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so to, to get you to commit, because you're a very committed actor in general, you're a very hard worker. You are, you kind of go all in on, on everything you do. So to to convince you to do another movie shortly before a big season of The Chosen would have required a lot of tr- trust and excitement on your part to try to pull that off. Uh, talk a little bit about that. What drew you to the script? What drew you to think it was worth it to lose the weight that you did to to commit what you did to learn about this character, Lonnie Frisbee, to do all the research, to kind of go all in like you always do? What was it that, that made you believe that this was worth it? Well, it starts with the script, like any of the any of the projects, you know, especially when you haven't worked with somebody like I hadn't worked with John before I met him. Uh, I loved him and Andy, you know, they were great when I met him, like in last September, I think it was when they premiered the uh, the Jesus music movie. Um, and and so I, I had heard um, ruminations about this story, but uh, I hadn't read a script, I don't think at that point. And then uh, or maybe it was a little earlier, John. I don't. I think it, I think that was the first time we had met in person, right? And then, uh, of course, I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> don't no, the premiere anything. for the premiere for the Jesus Music, which is this really great documentary yeah. about some of the music that came out of that time. That, that was last fall, I believe. I mean, uh, fall of twenty twenty. Yeah, it was somewhere. It was somewhere around there. Right. We got fall to know each other, but had never worked together for sure. Right, we never worked yeah. together. And, this, and then I think after that, I got he sent me the script. And the script was just tremendous. It was phenomenal. And I, I, I had no idea about this story. And I'd never heard of these characters or these figures in, you know, spiritual church history before. And so once I started looking into what the story was and who these people were and who Lonnie was, I was like, holy mackerel, like, I, how can I how can I not do this? It was it was kind of a no brainer. And then it was just a matter of like figuring out the logistics. Um, as with anything else, I, I put it before God and I just said, God, if there's a way for this to happen, there is a way that you can allow me to do this project and the chosen and, and you know, in, in one shot, you know, I'll, I'll give it everything I got. And uh, fortunately, he's like, yeah, we're going to we're gonna have you do both, which left me, yeah. I think, two weeks between finishing Jesus Revolution and starting season three. <laughs> so it was, Might have been a little less than that. But what season three was great. <laughs> Might have been yeah, a little less than that. But who's, <laughs> who's counting? <laughs> what, 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 you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I was. I think it was actually uh, 127 hours and 30 minutes was the difference. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. That sounds um, better. Go right into walking on the water. I, I forget when you guys were filming yeah. that. The first was, thing. Yeah. The first thing we did actually with Jonathan was uh, episode three, which is him coming home to his hometown and, and tar- big, long uh, scenes with uh, Mother Mary. And so, yeah, we went right into it. Uh, yeah, and so, then that second week was the uh, the tank in Louisiana. Yeah, yeah. It so was it, was, we, it, was, it was intense. But um, we, I forgot to mention at the beginning, we actually have an exclusive clip that I'm going to, uh, we're going to show in just a few, just a few moments that awesome. no one has seen yet. Uh, it's from, from the movie. It's a beautiful, beautiful scene. We'll show that in a second. But Jonathan, um, when you look at the trailer for Jesus Revolution, you see uh, the beard and the long hair. It's, it's, in fact, some people have actually thought you're playing Jesus again in a modern context. As a hippie. No, he's not playing Jesus. Uh, it's Lonnie Frisbee, who was definitely not Jesus. That'd be but, a whole other gospel. Yes. <laughs> but um, 
they're, they're, they're obviously slightly similar looks because of the beard and whatnot, but obviously different, uh, significantly different characters. Yeah. And uh, the process for you, a lot of actors have kind of one approach that they take to all their characters. Uh, and can you talk about the difference between your approach and process for The Chosen, playing Jesus, where you can't really go full quote unquote method where you're trying to truly be Jesus on set because of course that's right. impossible. Right. Um, but you wanted to maybe do a little bit of that because you and I talked a little bit during this process. Maybe do a little bit of that uh, for Jesus Rev. But what's the difference in, in terms of as an approach yeah. as an actor between playing Jesus and playing someone like Lonnie? Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, with Jesus, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, subjective kind of prep. You know, there's uh, there's so much that I can read through the gospel, so much that I can um, research on my own. There's obviously no footage of Jesus, you know, um, so there's nothing to work off of in that respect where um, as far as different kinds of approaches go, there's what they call inside out and then outside in. So if I'm working inside out as an actor, I'm starting with stuff that might maybe um, uh, stimulates me emotionally that produces the, the, the right tones and, and feelings and, and, um, and or emotions organically that, that fit with the character versus uh, working outside in like, okay, uh, sometimes I need like a, a certain outfit will make me take on a certain attitude, a certain hairstyle or beard or something. Or in this case, you know, losing 20, 20, 25 pounds um, makes you feel physically completely different. So it kind of affects a different sort of body posture. So um, with Jesus, it's much more sort of inside out and then just praying and meditating and, and scripture and, and, um, and, and then getting out of the way to kind of let the, the, the Holy Spirit kind of inhabit the words and I just kind of filter them out and what comes out is my version of Jesus. Uh, with Lonnie, uh, it was like, you know, I had a lot of uh, video to look, look at, photos, um, recordings of him, uh, people that knew him and walked with him and ministered with him and ministered alongside him and personal, you know, recollections. Um, uh, Roger Sachs, the co-author of his, the, the trilogy of his autobiography, I spoke to him at great length to, to know what it was like, what Lonnie was really like in person, what was his stature. Um, so that, that was more working outside in Lonnie was a very petite man. So he was maybe, I think they said probably around like five foot five, uh, mm -hmm. less than a hundred pounds, you know, uh, soaking wet and, and like he had a, like a, a size seven or six shoe or something like that. So he was tiny because I'm six feet tall and I was like 175 pounds. I said, well, how do I, how do I kind of convincingly move in that direction? So at least I feel a little thinner and more slight in physicality. And so, so what made sense for me was to lose, you know, as much weight as I could in that amount of time safely, of course, with a trainer. Um, and luckily we hit, we hit our goal and, and I was pretty skinny. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that, that, those are some of the, the broad stroke differences of approaches to those characters. You, you li literally transformed. I've never, I've, I've had a privilege of working with a lot of wonderful actors and, uh, but you, you went through a process that you transformed into mm -hmm. uh, some, and it was, and what I call it method light, really. Mm -hmm. You know, we call, I mean, we literally called you Lonnie uh, on, on the set and you, you discovered and stayed in this accent. And it was so yeah. cool because we were able to use actual historical photographs at the end of the movie and just show people how close you got in appearance yeah. and mannerisms and words. And it was spot on. It's an incredible performance. And you have that natural gift of like intensity. Yeah. But but it was um it was a it was a complete transformation in a way I've seen few actors do. And it was cool. Yeah. And I so think, we got I this think a lot on. of that just to, to, sorry, just to put a, a, a finer point on that with, with the method thing. So um, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, a lot of confusion about what is method and is it living in a cabin? Is it living on the beach for three months? And that's not technically the method. It's, it's a series of exercises that help you recreate actual or, you know, cir circumstances within your own life to help uh, create these, these authentic or uh, emotional reactions. But I think for me, when I knew I actually won you guys over is when I was talking to Brent on set and he's putting my information in his phone and in, you know, like my contact information. And for the first name, he's typing Lonnie. And he can like, 
just completely was like, oh my gosh, I was just about to put you in my phone as Lonnie Frisbee. So to me, that was like, okay, mission accomplished. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, method is where usually you see it on set when an actor is trying to inhabit the role even off camera just to try to stay in that presence. Uh, a lot of our actors on The Chosen, will, will, will t including Jonathan, will talk in the accent all day so that they don't slip out of the accent. Mm -hmm. But we don't have any actors who literally are like in character, tw you know, 12 hours of 20, the day and while they're eating yeah. lunch and stuff like that. I don't um, know how people maintain that. that, that to me, yeah. it's just a lot of extra energy. Yeah, exactly. But everyone has a different uh, approach. But yeah. we have this clip that uh, I want to show, John. You can set it up. Yeah. And then uh, after the clip, I want we, we have another trailer uh, that I want to show you that's really cool. It's kind of the latest Jesus Revolution trailer um, that, that really turned out great. But uh, I want you to set it up. And then after this clip, I want to ask Jonathan also kind of about yeah. who Lonnie Frisbee is and, and his and, and Jonathan's experience in this scene. But what's the scene we're about to show? Yeah, so this is, you know, the the, the photography in, in Time Magazine and in Life and, and some of the other, the most iconic photography of the Jesus movement was at this place, Pirate's Cove, and it's in uh, Southern California, and there were these mass baptisms. Uh, most baptisms ever recorded in American history was during the Jesus yeah. movement. And so they were there were these sort of spontaneous mass baptisms and that started out of Calvary Chapel. And we could have filmed that, you know, when you do a film, you could film anywhere. I mean, technically, you could go to pretty much any beach and do that. But I just felt like there was a sacredness to that location and we should go back where it actually happened and match the photographs. Very difficult location. It's like a crescent moon and it's jagged rocks. You gotta go up and over. There's no way to get gear over. But we went back to the actual spot and we had like 500 extras. And uh, and it's it's one of the most, it's it's, it's my favorite scene I think that I've ever that I've ever had in a movie uh, just because of its power and we felt it on the day I can talk about that after but this is where um, Jonathan playing Lonnie is baptizing Greg uh, uh, played by by Joel Courtney and we've been with these teenagers and Greg for half of the movie so this is right halfway through the movie and you've been with these, these so Greg meaning Greg Laurie yeah. who's the obviously the, the well-known pastor today who does massive events and whatnot this is you see him as a as a teenager, as a teenager yeah. getting back his character being baptized by Lonnie, Lonnie yeah. who Jonathan is playing, which absolutely happened, and uh, and it was beautiful, and and uh, so yeah, check out the scene, and then the, the the power that we felt on the day was yeah. you know, no one's seen this, so you get time. you're getting this for the uh, before anybody else, so enjoy this uh, right now. Why is it gonna prove? Right, it's just water. It's why are you freaking out? I'm not freaking out. I'm not freaking out. Okay, I'm freaking out a little bit. You're gonna be fine. Do you fully accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I do. I'm not going to show you. Your heart, your soul, your life will never be the same. You're welcome. <laughs> How'd that feel? You'll see. Hi. Greg, right? Yeah. I've been praying for this moment since I first met you. Have you decided? Um, uh, I don't know. You want to decide right now? Yeah. Yeah, I do. And pray with me. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. But you are the savior of the world. You are the savior of the world. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to come into my life. and repent for my sins. I repent for all my sins. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior, my God and friend. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior, my God and my friend. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Greg, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
How do you feel? Alive. Alive. <laughs> Yeah, so that that is that's a really cool scene, and it's the heart, I think, of the sh- of of the movie. And I remember when Amanda and I watched it, um, it there was something powerful about going, "Man, this, this it's similar to certain scenes from The Chosen, where you're going, I feel like we might actually be pl- plausibly recreating what really happened mm-hmm. and bringing it to life again." And in that scene, you go, "This is." This is a film version, uh, you know, with with music and with kind of the the, the effects of that only film can have. Uh, the, uh, but it, it's a plausible recreation of something that really had a huge impact on the world. I mean, Greg Laurie and, and what God has done through him is is extraordinary. And uh, so, Jonathan, uh, Lonnie Frisbee baptizing Greg Laurie. Uh, real quick, who is Lonnie Frisbee, and what about that scene when you were filming it? Uh, for you, Jonathan, uh, had an impact as well. So Lonnie Frisbee was this vessel of the Holy Spirit. He was um, a man, or really a kid. He was a young, young man um, who came from a very, very troubled childhood. I mean, his most of his life was filled with suffering from the time he was about three years old uh, up until he was a teenager and he left home and... and um, and uh, when he actually, when God called him to become a minister, uh, he was high on LSD in the mountains of Palm Springs. And uh, literally, like, the, the story is that the, the, this vibration descended over the canyon, and he had this vision of Jesus pointing him to the Pacific Ocean, and, which, of course, he couldn't actually see from Palm Springs. It's too far. It's, like, hours away. But he saw... Jesus showed him the Pacific Ocean, and and instead of being filled with water, it was filled with these mm-hmm. kids, these teenagers, these hippies that were yearning for for God desperately. And, and he told them, "You are going to bring these souls to me." And he literally sobered out of that vision, went down the mountain like Moses, preaching the gospel to anybody who would listen. And eventually, he came across um, Chuck Smith. And that started this this explosion, this nitro meets glycerin that, that John mentioned, yeah. that Pastor Greg, how Pastor Greg characterized it. So Lonnie had done an altar call at Pastor Greg's high school. So Pastor Greg came to Christ in his high school because Lonnie was on the campus preaching to kids. He would just show up and preach to kids and have kids and have crowds of them just following him and just li- listening to him wrapped with attention and you see a little bit of that in in the film actually and then uh and then when he started um going to calvary i think he was going to calvary chapel then eventually made a commitment to get baptized and then lonnie baptized him in the scene as we're filming recreating the baptisms um you know there was we had we had the lines of the of the script and then i was talking with pastor greg at length and asking like how to make this as authentic as possible. And so I said, what would you say to somebody if you were baptizing them now? And so Pastor Greg basically told me what he, he gave me a version of what he would, he would say. Um, 
and we just we were literally fighting the sunset i mean the sun was like it was inches from setting and we had this much time to try to get it and by god's grace we rolled and i we did that scene and we got it just as the sun setting and it was all the things all the components to to make the baptism you know valid i guess you would say uh and it was just completely um it was almost mystical in a way how we filmed it and what happened as it was ha as we did it and um throughout the course of those few days that we were there i mean there were there were, as as john um may have mentioned earlier um or even when we were talking before people were actually getting baptized while we were filming um in fact we were we had two cameras rolling at one point on either side and it was i think it was a, it was a wide shot and then I was in the middle of the water, Kelsey was off to the side, or maybe even one of the other pastors. There was an actual pastor from Calvary Chapel that was acting as, as a pastor, baptizing people along one of the days that Lonnie was preaching or baptizing. And this woman starts, one of the takes, this woman's kind of wading through the water trying to get to me. And we're rolling. And she says, I have to tell you something. And I'm like thinking, uh-oh, you know, because don't, you don't know what's going to happen because this is not scripted. Nobody was supposed to be saying anything. And uh, I said, what, what do you got? And she's like, I want to do this for real. Can, can, I, can we do this for real? And I said, you mean you want to get baptized for real? She said, yeah, can, can I do that? I said, let's do it. And so I asked her her name and I, I called her Jenny for the sake of anonymity. And I said, uh, I, said uh, I said, all right, Jenny, let's do it. I said, do you uh, accept, Jenny, do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? She's like, absolutely. I said, do you repent of your sins? She said, every single one of them. And I said, I took her and I said, Jenny, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And I dunked her. And she came up and there were tears running down her face. And she kind of just like, just waded back out with such buoyancy. And then you, right. on one of the shots in the montage of the baptisms, you actually see her coming out right after that moment. So it was... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty special. There, there were a bunch of them. I've never felt a level of power. You talk about the miracles, you know, when you make Chosen. And every, every, everything, every a movie requires miracles to get made. But in my, in my career, I've never felt a moment that powerful. I remember the Calvary Chapel pastor came up and he's like, the, telling you, God's Spirit's here. If we, just, if we just had a service right now, there'd be a huge response. I'm like, we can't do the sun setting. We're filming a movie. We can't do that. But then while we're filming... Your baptism, you know, you, as you're baptizing Greg, uh, Greg Laurie, pastor, uh, five uh, other people, real, real character was probably a hundred yards away. Uh, one of the cast members who hadn't acted in like 14 years, um, oh, yeah, yeah. uh, he was, he was, uh, Sean, he was baptizing him. And, uh, and so I've just never sort of had a day like that. You could just feel it. You could, and I hope that power comes through, uh, in the movie, but it was several people making mm -hmm. very real decisions and uh you know you you, you it, was, it was just so powerful i'm like man i was baptized as a kid baptize me this is this is this is incredible you know and and it, it was a powerful moment and the prayer in which is that was not written in the script that was something that jonathan and greg uh came up with and rehearsed and the way you guys put your foreheads together and it was just so authentic because we could only do it once because of where the sun was at and that's the take that's in the film and uh and so it's just there was something magical about it. It was really, really powerful. Yeah, no, and it's it's a great scene and it's a powerful film. Um, I feel like the Chosen is the story of of Jesus, kind of the origin story of Jesus of Nazareth, and uh, and then Jesus Revolution is like two thousand years yeah. later. The consequences of that uh, being revived. I mean, and and and. Uh, and, and putting on the cover of Time Magazine, the Jesus Revolution. Um, yeah, yeah, it, I love they, that it's, it's it's Jesus. It's not it's not you know a social revolution, whatever. It's it's a Jesus revolution, and it was so yeah. undeniable. That's what they had to put on the cover. It's incredible. Yeah. So it's really cool that in in February here we've got the release of the, the conclusion of season three of the Chosen, and then uh, and and you see Jonathan playing not only the man who is the what was the cause of, of, of all of it, you know, the, 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 literally the origin of this whole thing, but then also the man who re got, re, reignited it uh, mm -hmm. in America. 
um, 2,000 years later, which is really special. We'll close with this before we show a trailer because we got a, the, the latest trailer for Jesus Revolution is really cool. But uh, Jonathan, real quick, and then John, what, what do you most want people to get out of it when they see this movie? Like you want them to walk out of Jesus Revolution uh, thinking or feeling what? Um, you know, I, if they if a person doesn't have a relationship with Jesus, what I would hope is that this inspires their curiosity to, to have one and to seek. And if they do have one, that it will bring them deeper into that relationship and to also maybe if they're from a different, uh, you know, denomination to kind of see that, um, how, how, uh, ecumenical this movement was, uh, because it affected so many different kinds of Christians, um, and, uh, and people from all different walks of the faith. So I think, I think it would be to, to, to bring a, a, a sense of strong of faith to the viewer. And then also, I think, to continue in, in the vein of the chosen to amplify and, and qualify the quality of this kind of filmmaking that tells these kinds of stories. Because for so long, Christian filmmaking has had such a bad rap and they have, you know, it has not had a, it's a, a great share of, of, you know, really high level uh, artistic endeavors. And I think Jesus Revolution is an example of fantastic, uh, phenomenal filmmaking, j just as much as uh, The Chosen is for television filmmaking, you know, television making and filmmaking in its own right. So um, I, I think, and, and I, 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 I can't express my gratitude um, greater than to just say how honored I am to be a part of both of these projects and uh, I, I feel like it's it's only be by God's grace and by God's hand that I can be attached to two phenomenal projects that are in theaters that have such strong quality and such beautiful um, methods of telling these stories. Oh, that's awesome. Well, it's also when you're, you know, to have someone so dedicated to their faith, which you are, but also as dedicated to their craft. Yeah. That is that is a privilege because you, you you know I remember the first few scenes we did together. I'm like, man, Jonathan is really good, especially going up against Kelsey Grammer, who's who's done everything from you know <laughs> Frazier to Macbeth, you know, over a, like a four decade period, you know, and you guys are going toe to toe and uh, and and really brilliantly, you know, and so it's it's great to see that kind of dedication. For me, you know, first of all, we're entertainers, you know, so I hope. Yeah. that people laugh and cry and have a great time at the theater. It's, it's one of those films where there's so many different ways into the story that a lot of different people can watch it together and really enjoy it. I've, I've never had as much fun with an audience watching a film. You know, uh, you know an audience, we, we played at Liberty, and they were cheering during the movie, you know, and, and that, that doesn't happen, you know. And, and Other than you... when they're watching The Chosen. Yeah, of course. But I see your point. Yeah, I, you know, I, you know, I, I, I get you. you know, yeah, they, yeah. They, they cheer songs. Yeah. 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 They, it very, very rarely happens, except uh, amazing TV shows. Yeah. Uh, um, you guys have got the market covered, you realize. TV, film, covered. That's it. We're yeah. done. We're good. For the month of February... We're basically your choices, uh, you know, but uh, but in entertaining people, you know, you really get an opportunity. And my hope for this has always been I tell people is probably the most selfish film I've ever made because I just wanted to experience a spiritual awakening in my own life and in my family. And yeah, yeah. the idea that God uses flawed, broken people, you know, uh, of whom I fit right in in these moments in time like this is really, really cool. And just. Um, yesterday, actually, uh, Beth and I drove over to this, we were near, we we're wrapping another movie near Asbury, um, college. And there's this sort of spontaneous revival happening there that happened in 1970 as well. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to feel it. So my hope overarching for this film is that people will see it and say, maybe this can happen again. Maybe there could be another Jesus revolution. We're at a time that's just as desperate. Now that was the key word to that movement was it was just such a desperate time in America. And I just think that we're back. And, and that's the last time God really intervened and showed up in a big way. And, um, you yeah, that's my hope. That's my hope is that people will see it and say, maybe this can this happen in my life, in my family, in my city, in America, and this could, this could happen again. So, so, uh, so yeah, go check it out. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Go check it out. And, uh, the, the, the best way for us to continue to do things like this is, is when, uh, they're actually, you know, successful. Uh, I hate to use that word because success has a different meaning for for some people, including us. But 
Uh, but yeah, if, if there can be a strong opening weekend, I would encourage you not to wait for it to come to streaming if you don't have to. Some people can't. can't. They can't go see it in the theaters. We experience that with The Chosen. They don't have the means or they don't have the opportunity, and that's okay. But if you do, uh, I would strongly encourage you to see it on the big screen. It's better on the big screen. And if you can see it opening weekend, that's what keeps it in theaters longer. It's a math equation. Mm -hmm. And so the theaters aren't against playing movies like ours. They've loved it. They extended the days for The Chosen because it was successful. They will extend the days for Jesus Revolution. There's no incentive for them to take it out of theaters as long as people are are, uh, are getting tickets. So and it's amazing. Uh, make when, sure you do that. When we watch it, it triggers this thing called FOMO, which is the fear of missing out. We unify our voice. I remember how that felt with I Can Only Imagine. We, we, and it just happened with The Chosen. When you so sort of shock the system, a, a bunch of people that would never see a movie like this show up out of curiosity. And so, yeah, yeah. go check it out. It's playing. starts on Wednesday night. There's, uh, it's hard to get tickets. It's mostly sold out, but there's a special access with, with bonus footage including Greg Laurie sharing a gospel presentation, which, again, I can't believe Lionsgate is letting us do. Uh, but check it out. It's, it's uh, coming to theaters this weekend. Absolutely. And, um, look, this is an opportunity to be part of something uh, bigger, and uh, it's an opportunity to see films that are high quality uh, be be in theaters with along with everything else. We're not trying to replace Hollywood. We're just trying to have a voice uh, in culture, and that's what uh, this film does, so it's really great. Jonathan, you really... Um, you really did great in the film. Uh, I was really proud of you. I remember the first time I saw it, and uh, and so it's exciting. More to come, and uh, hopefully we'll be doing some more things. Uh, to, we'll be talking about other things, and other projects, and as well. Uh, let's keep this going. But uh, we don't want you to do a favor. You don't. No one owes the, the Jesus Revolution a favor. You should go see it because you want to see yeah, it. Enjoy it. And here's a reason why. Check out this trailer right now, and hopefully it will encourage you to uh, to to, to want to go see it, regardless of whether I'm recommending it which I am. So check out this trailer now. Our country is a dark and divided place. But in that tent, there's hope and unity and miracles that I can't even explain. I'd like you to meet my new friend, Lonnie Frisbee, and some of his friends. Welcome. These kids are runaways, most of them. They need our help. Chuck, stop. They don't belong here. Agreed? There's this church. It's called Calvary Chapel. When we say we're looking for truth, what if this is true? Because everything that we've been trying is not working for me. I just can't be lying down again. Look what I have felt in there. I haven't... What if it's good for a minute and then it's gone? What then? We can find out together. Seems the movement's everywhere. Los Angeles, movement in the South. It's spreading like wildfire. The beach where people get baptized we drove all the way here where from texas i don't know if any of this is real i kind of hope it is to be honest it's a family man